Welcome. Today we're going to be taking apart a Dell Alienware M17. Uh, this is the 8th gen i7 with a GeForce RTX 2070 video card. And it's the 17 inch version of the Alienware. So to begin we're going to need a small Phyllis bit. This is a 2.5. Just going to flip this laptop over and we're going to go ahead and remove the two rear screws and all of the screws here um, along the bottom case. Alright, now that we have those screws out, or in the case of the front screws just loosened, uh, we can go ahead and remove the bottom case. Um, this one seemed to kind of pop up in its own, and it's pretty easy to remove. We'll just kind of give it a wiggle and pop it up and off. Um, but if yours is a little bit stickier, uh, you can just use a spudger or some other flat tool around the edge to kind of um, work it off. But I'm assuming that since this one's brand new, uh, most of this model are going to be pretty easy to get that bottom case off. All right, so we can see the inside of the laptop, and it looks like most of the screws holding everything together are the same size Phillips. Um, there might be one or two smaller size, but for the most part, you'll be able to tear down the entire laptop with just a couple small Phillips bits. Um, so to begin, we're going to uh, go ahead and put on the anti-static wristband. Um, if you don't have one, just make sure to ground yourself, um, touch something big and metal before you start, and that way you can help uh, not bork your laptop. Alright, so we'll go ahead and first remove the battery. So we'll just go ahead and take out those Phillips head screws. Looks like there's just four of them. And on the connector, it's just gonna pop up and off. And they gave me a little handy loop here. So just pull straight up and pop that battery connector off. And then we can remove the battery. All right. So it looks like everything uh, inside the laptop's pretty easy to get to. Um, and once you have that bottom case off, you have easy access to your RAM, uh, your SATA hard drive, your NVMe SSD drive, in outboard, um, fan assembly, Wi Fi card. Um, it all looks pretty easy to get to. I remember the older Alienwares were sometimes a real pain to disassemble, but uh, it looks like they've kind of streamlined and efficientized their process. So once you have that bottom case off, it looks like it'll be pretty easy to. Uh, get to anything you need, um, except for, of course, the keyboard, which is buried under everything. But All right, so now we'll go ahead and just remove those RAM sticks by spreading that little, or the little retainer bars, and then once those sticks pop up, just pull them straight out of the slot. All right, next we'll go ahead and flip it around and remove the SSD drive. Looks like just one screw, and then you can remove your uh, SATA or your SSD drive. This is a NVMe style 2280 SSD drive. Uh, it looks like there's a couple slots for them, so you have the ability to upgrade your storage with two SSD drives for speed, and then you also have that 2.5 inch SATA here for the uh, the bigger, slower storage. All right, we'll do that next. Um, so for the SATA hard drive, you just have this little connector here. And on these type that you pull up, I like to hold down the board somewhere near where you're tugging up because sometimes these can be real, um, you have to pull really hard to, to pop it off and I've had it actually like um, start cracking the motherboard. Some of them are on so tight. So once you get that connector popped off, and we'll just go ahead and remove the four screws holding in the SATA hard drive. And 
much of the four screws out, we should be able to kind of give it a little bit of a wiggle and uh, to remove the hard drive from that caddy, there's going to be two Phillips screws on each side. Once you remove those, you'll be able to pop your drive out and then the SATA connector here just pull straight out. So there's definitely uh, quite a bit of uh, storage availability for this particular model. And I like the fact that they have two NVMe slots for those uh, SSD drives. All right, so we'll go ahead and remove this Wi-Fi card now. And it looks like it's just one screw. And you wanna pop off that little plastic bracket. And to remove the Wi-Fi antennas, you can just pop up with your fingernail. Pop those antennas up and off. And then, just like the SSD drives, it'll pop up and then you can pull it straight out. And then for reinstalling the Wi-Fi antennas, if you're doing your card, um, you just press them back on. There's nothing really uh, too scientific about it. All right, I think now we will go ahead and remove the fans and heat sink. This looks like there's quite a bit of screws holding in the fan and heat sink assembly. Um, these screws are numbered for when you go to reinstall your heat sink. Um, you wanna tighten them in that order so that it tightens down the thermal paste kind of evenly and you get an even compression there on your processor and your GPU. But as far as removal, um, the order doesn't matter. It's just for reinstalling. So we'll go ahead and loosen or remove those uh, heat sink and fan screws. Alright, once you have those screws uh, loosened or removed, um, we can go ahead and get these fan connectors. So they have a notch on either side and you can just work it back and forth to um, kind of work it out of the connector. It just comes straight out laterally. And this one's a little bit more easy to access, so we'll get a fingernail on that one. All right. So now we'll just go ahead and just kind of give it some gentle wiggling. Um, a lot of times the thermal paste can act as a pretty strong adhesive. Uh, so you definitely don't want to just go for it and lift up on it. Um, so we'll just go ahead and work both sides until we get the heat sink loose from the motherboard. So in this case, since the since the GPU is probably pretty big, um, the thermal paste it would definitely stuck this one on. So all you got to do is just give it some pretty good wiggling, and it'll come off. Yeah, that's that's a huge amount of thermal paste from the GPU. So once you have the screws off, it's going to feel like there's something still stuck there, but as long as you go over it again and make sure that um, everything's loosened, then you'll be fine to kind of wiggle the rest of that off. That's how you remove the fan assembly. All right, so we're most of the way there to removing the motherboard. Um, since we're kind of right here and it's easily available, we'll go ahead and remove this uh, dual USB board. It's quite simply just removing the two screws. And for this type of connector, uh, there's a small metal bar that needs to be released and flipped up from the back of the connector. So it's, um, it kind of retains it and it'll also help you to pull that connector out. And then it's just a couple pieces of tape holding that on. All 
And that's how you remove the USB board. All right, we'll give it a quick look. So it looks like we're ready to start removing the uh, connectors to the motherboard. So there's quite a few different kind of connectors here. Um, the front, you just kind of flip up on the little uh, dark retainer. Uh, it's kind of like a little flip up gate. And then that'll allow you to remove the ribbon. And then it's a good idea to flip it back down. Um, less chance of it getting broken if you're moving the motherboard around. And same, t same type of connector with the keyboard, uh, but this one's got the little flip up part on the other side, so you'll just flip it up like you did the other ones, remove that ribbon, and then flip it back down. Uh, looks like we have our speaker connection right here, so we'll just kind of wiggle that out with our fingernails. Uh, this big connector right here is for the DC input and this laptop has a 240 watt AC adapter which is pretty much why this connector is so big. So we're going to just give it a little bit of a fingernail um, on either side and just kind of wiggle it out of that connector. So it'll just slide straight out. Um, it does have quite a bit of resistance just because of the size of the connector. And then since we're going to be removing that DC jack, I'll just go ahead and kind of unstick it from the uh, palm rest assembly while I'm over here. All right, so we have here on the front, I believe this is the uh, display connector. So much like the USB board, we're going to peel up on that blue piece of tape. and make sure that bar is flipped up and then we can pull that connector out of the motherboard and just kind of free it up and we have another connector over here possibly for the webcam or something else um, this type of connector is similar to the speakers it's just going to come out uh, laterally and just get your fingernails on there or uh, some other tool and just wiggle it back and forth until it comes out. And over here we have the pram battery. Uh, this is going to stay connected to the motherboard. Um, so you want to unstick it from the palm rest and just, you know, you can stick it on the motherboard or let it kind of hang free. Um, but it should stay connected to the motherboard. All right, so we'll give it another look. We have a lot of screws kind of holding the motherboard onto the palm rest. I just want to make sure that we've got all of the connectors so that when we're done unscrewing it, then we can remove the motherboard. So it looks like there is one small one right here, kind of hiding. So this one also has the flip up type retainer. So we'll flip that up and pull that ribbon out and flip it back down. All right, I'm not sure about the uh, USB-C connection. Um, those may have to be removed, but I'll wait until uh, I'll save those for last in case those are uh, not needing to be removed. All right, then we will go ahead and remove the screws for the motherboard. All right, so we got almost all the screws. Uh, we just got one here in the middle, and then we can hopefully free the motherboard from the palm rest. So it looks like maybe this does need to be removed. Uh, it's a little bracket surrounding the USB-C. And then we'll just uh, pull that bracket off. It looks like they have part of the palm rest uh, screw posts poking through the motherboard, so that definitely needs to be removed. All right, and then um, once you're ready to pull that motherboard up, you want to do it really slow and gentle. And that way, if there's still a ribbon attached somewhere or on the bottom, you're not going to yank it 
you know, rip it in half or damage your motherboard connector. So it looks like we are good to go. And that is how you remove the motherboard. All right, so we can go ahead and finish uh, removing that DC jack. So it looks like a couple more screws to pull that bracket off. Set that aside, and then we can finish uh, kind of peeling the DC jack out of the palm rest assembly. So the DC jack is probably not the easiest to replace on this computer, but um, you know it's it's a solid piece of technology. So the only reason you would have to switch it out is if you damaged it by yanking the connector or something. So that's how you remove the rest of the DC jack. All right, so we'll take a look here at the palm rest. Um, looks like the touchpad is definitely replaceable. The keyboard is definitely replaceable. There's just a ton of little Phillips head screws. Um, these are smaller. These are gonna be a 1.0, I believe. So you're definitely gonna need a smaller uh, Phillips head screwdriver to remove that keyboard. But once you have all these little screws out, it'll just peel off of the palm rest assembly. But in this case, we're gonna go ahead and leave it with the assembly. Uh, speakers are just held in there by rubber grommets and you just have the speaker wires kind of channeled through the palm rest. Uh, that looks pretty easy. And there's only one other thing we need to get off of the palm rest before we separate the display and that is the power button. And the power button is kind of hidden under the black plastic here. So once we have that peeled up, then we can go ahead and remove the button board. All right, so we are ready to separate the display assembly and we want to make sure that the cables are all nice and loose not hooked up to anything and looks like we're good to go so we're going to open up the palm rest from the display just like you're opening up the entire laptop and then we're going to flip it over And it's always best to support um, the bottom with your hand when you're removing the hinge screws. That way the last screw um, doesn't break in the little uh, screw mount or damage it. All right, so once you have those hinge screws, you can separate the display assembly from the palm rest assembly. All right, so that's about it for the palm rest. Um, as we discussed, if you need to remove the keyboard, um, it is definitely replaceable. Uh, a lot of the newer model laptops uh, have it integrated with like plastic rivets and it just it makes it almost impossible to replace just your keyboard um, You usually end up having to do the whole palm rest assembly. So it's nice to see Alienware uh, made the uh, or Actually Dell made the Keyboard replaceable. So that is it for the palm rest All right, so we are left with the display assembly um, in this case, we're going to leave the display assembly complete. Um, it can be kind of a pain to separate the bezel from the rest of the screen assembly. Um, the place that you're going to want to put your flat tool or spudger is in the front here, um, right next to the rubber bit. Um, I did already get it started so you can kind of see how the bezel and the display assembly separate. So once you have that uh, front piece kind of pulled up. 
Um, you can see your Wi-Fi antenna and your screen assembly inside there. Um, you're just going to go along and finish separating the bezel from the back cover assembly. Um, it, they do use quite a bit of adhesive, um, so you want to go slow and careful. And if you have a heat gun um, or even you know a blow dryer or something to help it heat that adhesive, especially at the bottom, um, definitely do it. Uh, or you can just go the easy route and buy the display assembly as a whole unit. But that's basically how you get it started. It's just separating the bezel. And once you have the bezel off, you'll be able to access your hinge screws. Uh, anything that's attaching the screen, your webcam, everything is just right under the bezel. Uh, so that is how you disassemble an Alienware M17. Uh, this is the 8th gen i7 version with the RTX 2070 video card. Um, so if this video helped you or you found it informative, please like and subscribe. Thank you very much.